and upload video. That is the best feeling. I can't stress enough. Let's see what the comments are saying, shall we? I bet they loved it. I Hi, they... Seamus. Great video. I'm a huge fan. Wow, what, Seamus, I'm anyone, your biggest what? fan. Keep it up. I, mean, I love thanks. you. Please keep does, making does these videos. Know how to turn this yeah, off, hi, like, no hate. I really just... like you, but I prefer your old videos. Yeah, video. okay, that's how fair. I mean, you. you can't call yourself okay, a fan and yep, if you there, can't there, support there comes his content. Yeah, well, okay, you know, I just well, meant I prefer his Pixar yeah, videos. Yeah, that old you know? thing. Let's just. Um, hi, great video. I'm new, but I just subscribed. Okay, so thanks. So what? I've been subscribed. Does anyone know how to turn this off? Seriously, like, well, you haven't because I made my channel in 2015. So that simply isn't true. I am a much better fan. Do you look like that one generic white guy okay, with brown course. hair Let's and just... brown eyes from? Now you're probably wondering about the hair, and I haven't had a haircut in three months. My hair now comes down to my nose, so I, I really don't know what you expect me to do. Until I can get a haircut, you're gonna have to get used to the hairband. Hopefully, it's only gonna be a couple weeks. Fandoms, the state or condition of being a fan of someone or something. Now I haven't actually looked this up, but I believe the word comes from combining the word fan or fanatic and kingdom, you know, fandom. And even if it isn't right, I actually really like this analogy with every fan base kind of having their kingdom where they get together and enjoy things, but it also could have a deeper meaning because throughout history, pretty much every kingdom has been filled with corruption and they end up getting overthrown for something new every time. Which raises the question, are fandoms bad or destined to fail and how are we supposed to know when it's time for one to end? And obviously this is to do with the recent Harry Potter and JK Rowling situation, but I'm gonna be going through my own personal experiences with fandom culture and just a whole lot of serious topics because it's either a lighthearted Disney sequels video or a serious video. There's no in between on this channel. Subscribe. No, I'm just gonna answer that first question real quick. No, I don't think fandoms are bad. It's people coming together to find other people who enjoy the same things they do. Like, how can that be a bad thing? Unless you're getting together to like, discriminate against well don't do that and yes i'm probably a little biased i've built a career and made great friends out of talking about fandom stuff but also because of how many people i've shared this fandom with i feel like i've seen the bad side more than most and i'm very aware of the toxicity i'm whispering because i don't want the non-toxic people who get offended by me using the word toxic to get offended despite the fact it's not about them if they're not toxic you know you see, the problems with fandoms start to come in when you get some particularly extreme fans who I don't doubt have enjoyed and consumed the content as much, if not more than most, but they start to think that their interpretations and opinions of the media are superior to anyone else's, which is just flat out wrong. I don't know why I have to say this, but I feel like I do. Art is subjective. Your interpretations and opinions of it are valid. Now for the most part, one person like this isn't a massive problem, but when it comes to fandoms and people like this start interacting with other people like this who have the same opinions, making them think their opinions are even more superior, that's when it starts to get toxic. Now, I wanna make it very clear, these people are entitled to these opinions, they are valid just as much as anyone else is entitled to the complete opposite opinion. And this is with anything that's pretty much meaningless that isn't hurting anyone. But once there's this massive group of them believing that the opposite opinion isn't valid, it can start to create a mob mentality, making the fandoms unwelcoming to new people joining. And when that inevitably happens, it can lead to disagreements, fights, and even threats. I've seen it get very bad over very small things, you know, whether it be the morality of a character, which song or game is best or even what player performed well or didn't perform well from a game like fandom and fan bases branch out very far and instances of things going way too far are all too common pretty much across all forms of fandom now of course some are harsher than others because it all comes down to what kind of people that specific content attracts and i like to believe it's the vocal minority that are toxic. But at a point in time, I feel like I was that toxic fan, and I would like to talk about how and why I think that happened. So to preface this, I'd like to state that I wasn't really involved in fandom culture up until I was about 18, 19 years old. I was never a massive gamer. I played more as a kid, but when I did, it was mostly single player stuff, so I was never really part of a community there. I listened to music, obviously, and briefly discussed likes and dislikes with friends, but I would never consider myself a part of like a fandom for any specific artist or band like 
I just never have been. So I guess supporting a football team was the closest I ever got to experiencing it. But again, it's mostly small conversations between friends rather than being part of this massive fan base or fandom. That was until I joined the Harry Potter fandom in 2016. Now, I should say I grew up with the books and read them in primary school and I'm pretty sure, wait, let's actually... I have this Harry Potter poster just sitting right outside where I record and I'm not a big collector of Harry Potter merch. I think my mum probably got it when the films were coming out, but... You know, I say I'm not a big collector of merch. I feel like I have like three items total that I've bought for myself and everything else I'm just given, so yeah. But as I got into my teens, the extent of my enjoyment of Harry Potter was pretty limited. Like, yeah, I had a working knowledge of it. I'd watch the films every now and again. Maybe I'd watch a video or two. I'd probably have gone to see Fantastic Beasts, but I wasn't like a super fan. I was just a regular consumer. That's until I started making videos on it myself. And oh boy, did I get sucked down the rabbit hole. I reread the books. I read the in-universe stories. I saw the spin-offs. I think one day I read every single article on Pottermore because you know, I wanted to be in the know with the law and be concise about everything I was saying in my videos. And I think I was. In 2016, I studied and learned Harry Potter. And in doing so, I built a community around myself of people who also like Harry Potter. And still, every day I get comments, tweets, or Instagram messages asking me just random questions about Harry Potter, which is great. 95% of it is great. But with that said, I never felt welcomed in the Harry Potter community. Now, whether that was because I was reading into what these toxic people were commenting on my videos too much, it probably was that. But I always concluded that because I was more well known for my Disney and Pixar videos, that I was kind of viewed as this half blood Harry Potter YouTuber. This could be a great analogy to do with like the rest of the fandom being pure bloods and them seeing me as a half blood and this like blood superiority comment. You kind of get what I'm going with, don't you? I'm not actually gonna finish that analogy. There was this kind of elitist mentality where I felt like people were waiting for me to slip up or make a mistake in a video, which I did, and then accuse me of never having read the books and clearly I'm not a real fan because I didn't know this one thing or... I still remember when I first became friends and did a meetup with Sophie, Vegon and Laura looking at the comments on their videos about the meetup and people were like, why did you invite him? And all in all, it was probably one comment out of like a thousand and I've just still remembered it and stuck it in my brain to remind myself of it to this day, but I don't know, something like that can make you feel unwelcome, and for me, it did. Now I wanna stress, this is massively a vocal minority. Like, I actually think the Harry Potter community is better than most when it comes to these elitist mentalities. Like, I mean, Star Wars, anyone? I'm whispering again because I don't want the angry Star Wars fans to get in my comments because, oh my God, just, this is a Harry Potter video, so they probably won't find it, but Jesus. Like, can you imagine bullying an actress off social media through racist abuse because you didn't like the character they played? I'm still not over that. That is actually one of the worst things fandom has ever done. And again, vocal minority, but in this case, there was a lot of them, clearly. And I feel like that's kind of why I had the idea to make those trolling fandom Twitter videos, because it shows how seriously some people take these things that are just supposed to be a bit of fun. But with that said, I want to make it very clear, I am by no means the victim here, you know? You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And yeah, I became just as bad, if not worse, than the people I've spent this video criticizing, because I had this platform and chose to use it spreading this elitist mentality, having this elitist mentality. I can think of so many things I tweeted or said in videos that just weren't very good things to say. Like, I can't even wrap my head around the amount of times I shamed people for not having read the Harry Potter books and having only seen the films. Like, I was just in this mindset that if you haven't read the books, you're not a real fan. And that's just the worst attitude to have for a welcoming community where people get together to enjoy things. I'm embarrassed of it looking back. And I started making more and more videos criticizing it, especially with the new stuff coming out. Like, I wasn't in the mindset of negative reviews, get views, find a reason to hate it, even if you liked it, because I was just, I felt overwhelmed and frustrated by the fandom, which seemed to consist of people who liked Harry Potter more than I did. Like, for a lot of people in the fandom, Harry Potter is their life, and that was never the case for me. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Harry Potter being your life. If you love it that much, you go love it and enjoy it. You, you have that, but I don't know, me personally, I like to enjoy all the things 
everything. And Toy Story is the best. Now these experiences all took place before the last few months and specifically earlier this week where JK Rowling has tried to alienate a portion of her audience and I mean if I thought there was a great cloud over my place in the Harry Potter fandom it has got a whole lot bigger and a whole lot more serious this week. And I think Daniel Radcliffe put it really well in the blog post he wrote. Transgender women are women. Any statement to the contrary erases the identity and dignity of transgender people and goes against all advice given by professional healthcare associations who have far more expertise on this subject matter than either Joe or I. To all the people who now feel that their experience of the books has been tarnished or diminished, I'm deeply sorry for the pain these comments have caused you. I really hope that you don't entirely lose what was valuable in these stories to you. And it's just really shameful to not only see her have these opinions, but sharing them with her large impressionable audience. Like, that's such a harmful thing to do. She's not only rationalizing transphobia to her already transphobic followers, but she's also causing followers with complete blind loyalty to her to also, maybe unknown to themselves, be actively transphobic. And that's a problem because this community is already disproportionately discriminated against. I don't want to make another video about her, it's just really upsetting to see trans women are women, trans men are men, and non-binary people are non-binary. And I guess that brings us on to the status of the Harry Potter fandom right now because I'm gonna be honest, it's the worst I've ever seen it. There's a lot of anger and hate on both sides and I really don't like that. I, I get JK Rowling said some horrible things, but you don't attack her. That's just not the way of going about things. If you're going to hate someone for saying something hateful, that makes you just as bad as them. And I wanna be kinda cute and bring it back to that whole fan kingdom analogy I had earlier, because I feel like the Harry Potter fandom is kind of under siege right now. And I believe the community's kind of been split into free camps, so. Let's go through what they are. Those who are happy to support Harry Potter just separating art from artist or I guess book from author. And I feel like most people are in this camp and I get it. I don't really ever think about JK Rowling when I'm consuming Harry Potter like I don't, does, do people do that? And I think that's why this fandom will continue to live on. But also, if you want to take a stance against JK Rowling while still enjoying Harry Potter, there are lots of ways of doing it without financially benefiting her. Like, support Harry Potter creators. Buy unofficial Harry Potter merch. Read fan fictions. These are all ways to support Harry Potter and talented creators without financially benefiting her. And yeah, if you want to do that, be my guest. Also, I get it if you just feel completely done with Harry Potter and don't even want to think about it anymore. Welcome to Camp 2 and... I feel like I've been in this camp for the last few months because, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, I haven't made a Harry Potter video in four months because it just hasn't been something I really want to talk about. Also, if you're looking for a new fandom to join, can I personally recommend Percy Jackson because Disney Plus are working on a series right now and it's about to become the biggest fandom in the world. So like, you either get on it now or you get on it in a year's time when the series comes out. Just get ahead of the curve, become a demigod. And then of course you've got the final camp, those who are in full support of JK Rowling. Now, it's worth noting that there is more on the table than just the transphobia, but if you are supporting her through these comments that she made, I would advise you read up on why what she said is harmful and dangerous from actual experts in this community, because I'm not claiming to be one, I'm not claiming you aren't one, but there will be links in the description if you wanna read up on it. And I guess that's kind of where the Harry Potter fandom stands right now, whether JK Rowling gets usurped and we have a new ruler or we just agree to be a democracy. I don't know. I just, this analogy is going way too far. I guess time will tell. Obviously, I don't think it's just going to completely disappear off the face of the earth. There's always going to be Harry Potter fans here and there, whether just the fandom and this big community are still going to be out there doing what fandoms do. I don't know. We'll see. And yeah, I think that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can watch another video by clicking here. You can check out my Patreon here and in the description down below. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Did I say thanks for watching twice again? I always feel like I say thanks for watching twice. It's just the biggest regret every time.